Okay, we'll skip attendance today. We're going to have a quick lesson. We're going to learn about books number 46 and 47. Who remembers how many books there are in the Bible? Mateo. Oh, one too many. 66. 66, that's right. Close, close. Maybe you got caught off by the 47 there. Yeah, so we got, what, about 20 books left to learn about. And now we're into the epistles. Who remembers what an epistle is? What is an epistle? Do you know? Oh, yeah, you probably want to put your hand up. Epistle is a letter. It's a letter that somebody wrote. That's another word for a letter. Yeah, maybe I'll ask you next week and see if you remember. So, <clears throat> why are these ones called 1st and 2nd Corinthians? Because these were two letters written by Paul. If you remember, we talked about Paul after he got saved when he was on the road to Damascus and he saw Jesus and straight away he went and started preaching the gospel, didn't he? And one of the towns he went to was the city of Corinth. So if I cover this, Corinth. Okay, so why is it called 1st and 2nd Corinthians? Well, it's called 1st and 2nd, what do you think, son? Because it's named after the city. That's right, so Corinthians, just like we are from Australia, we're Australians. You've got people from Corinth are Corinthians. So that's why it's called the letter to the Corinthians, because Paul is writing not one, but two letters to the people at Corinth. And you know, the church at Corinth, they had a lot of problems, didn't they? People committing sin in the church, a lot of questions they had. People were, had the gift of tongues. You know what that is, the gift of tongues? Who knows what the gift of tongues is? What do you think? The gift of languages. Languages, that's right. They could speak different languages. But you know what? God, because you're given the gift of another language, God doesn't want you using that gift when people don't understand what you're saying. So let's say you knew how to speak, you know, uh, Spanish. You know, you speak Spanish a little bit. But if you are talking to a church and nobody speaks Spanish, God doesn't want you to use that gift to speak to people that don't understand what you're saying. And that's what was happening in Corinth. So one thing they were doing is they were speaking in the church in a language that nobody understood just to make themselves look good as opposed to actually helping the church to understand. So there was problems, there was sin in the church, there was uh, people mis abusing their gifts, even people questioning whether or not Jesus rose from the dead. Can you imagine that? That Paul had to remind them, no, the, the gospel is the death, burial and resurrection. So Jesus had to rise again from the dead. The people were questioning that. But you know the main theme, the main theme of 1 Corinthians is something called charity. Who knows what charity is? The Bible uses the word charity. It uses another word as well. What do you think? What is charity? What do you think? To No, it's gone. No, I mean, maybe it sounds a bit like that, doesn't it? What do you think? Money? Money? No, but you're right. Today, people use the word charity as in we're donating money to somebody. So it's known. But what does the Bible use the word? As braveness. Braveness? No, that would be courage. So that's close. Charity means love. Charity is love, isn't it? So charity is another word when you love somebody, but specifically, it's not just the feeling. Charity is not just the feeling when you say, oh, I really love this thing, and you just feel like that. Charity is when you actually do something for somebody. You love them. And look what Paul says. This is 1 Corinthians 13 too. He says, And though I have the gift of prophecy, so he knows how to preach and teach God's word and understand all mysteries <coughs> and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, look at this, and have not charity, I am nothing. Oh, so the charity is pretty important, isn't it? Paul's saying, man, even if I can preach God's word, even if I understand everything, even if I had the faith that I could move mountains. Can you believe that? If you had the faith where you could say to the mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, Jesus says that that's possible for somebody to do so that I could remove mountains. But look, and have not charity, 
I am nothing. But without charity, it doesn't matter. That's why charity is very important, isn't it? So how do we show charity? Charity is when we do nice things for each other. We look after each other. Charity, for example, is like when, you, you know, when you're playing, you're playing a game. So it's when you're not charity, when you're not loving, you're thinking about yourself, aren't you? You having fun. But when you have charity, what is charity? Charity is when you're trying to help other people have fun. Yeah? Charity is even when you lose in a game. Okay? It's, you're still happy for the other team that they want. See? So charity doesn't bask in the glory and go, oh, look at me, I beat you. And charity doesn't say, you know, oh, I lost, oh, I'm crying now. Charity says, you know, good game. You know, so we can practice some charity later when we go play. Look what Paul says here, what he writes. 1 Corinthians 13, 13. And now abideth faith, hope, charity. But look at this, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. All right, so let's read this one together. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, one, two, three. But the greatest of these is charity. See, so faith, hope, and charity are all very important, aren't they? But what's the most important? Matea? Charity, yeah, make sure, make sure we put our hands up. So they were questioning the resurrection in 1 Corinthians, remember? 2 Corinthians, what were they questioning? They had other questions as well. But more importantly, they were questioning whether Paul was even an apostle. So they were doubting whether Paul was an apostle. He had to remind them that, hey, you guys are the proof that I'm an apostle. Because he was the one that got them saved and taught them about Jesus Christ and taught them about the gospel. So when we talk about charity, who do you think displayed the biggest act of charity? Who do you think? Timothy. God. That's right. God. Look at this. God commendeth his love toward us. His love. Remember? Charity is another word for love. And look at this. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's what Jesus said in John. He said, Greater love hath no man than this, than a man lay down his life for his friends. And he he did that for us when he died for us on the cross. Okay, so I hope you learned a little bit about First and Second Corinthians. Today we're going to play some games, and because the weather's so beautiful, why don't we go outside and we're going to play some games? All right, let's go.